average pay is between um, I know with Maris, my contract is for seven hundred and twenty five dollars a day. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm not driving, right? I'm just creating passive income. So my take home is less. But if I was a driver, right, that's one less person that you have to pay. Now you're going to make more. So that's another way you can make six figures a year. What's up, world? Welcome back to the Tuned In with Tony podcast. And I've got a special guest on here today that has an awesome business called Box Truck Solutions, where he teaches people how to start their own box truck business. He actually still drives in the box truck business. And what's super cool is you don't even have to have a CDL or anything to start this business. And I think this is going to be an excellent episode for you guys to learn how you can get yourself or friends or family started in the box truck or the trucking business by literally not even having to have this license. What's up, my guest, Von Sell Simmons? Welcome to the Tune In Tony podcast. Yo, what's up, Tony, man? Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So the reason why I got you on here is because we've got a lot of, you know, entrepreneurial guests on here, business people that are interested in starting just different, you know, types of businesses. And when I saw what you do in your box truck business and teaching people how to start, it was really cool because I see people looking at the 18 wheelers, right? Yeah. But with the box truck, you don't have to have that license, right? You don't have to have, what is it called, the CDL? That's correct. So you don't need a CDL to start a box truck business. As long as that truck is 26,000 pounds or less, mm-hmm. uh, that's considered a non-CDL box truck. And that's what we do. We show people exactly how to get started in the box truck business without having a CDL. Dope, dope. So when you hear 26,000 pound truck, right? Mm-hmm. What is kind of like that limit of like what a 26,000 pound truck looks like? Like what, what's less than that, which would be acceptable vehicles to drive? So again, anything less than 26,000 pounds. So that can be a 20 footer. That can be a 16 footer. But in Box Truck Solutions, what we teach is if you really want to maximize your earning potential, we strongly recommend that you purchase a 26 foot box truck. That way you can you know, really run the bag up. Got you. So when right. I see like a U-Haul that's like 26 feet, right? Yes. Or like a, what are the, you got the U-Haul trucks. What are the other brands that I see? Enterprise, Penske, all Penske. that type of stuff. So yeah. those are less than 26,000 pounds? That's correct. Got you. Mo- most of them are. And you just have to have a normal driver's license to be able to drive those trucks. That's correct. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when people get these types of trucks, right, mm-hmm. what are the types of things? freight that they're moving in these d- deals that they're doing? So um, there's a lot of different ways to make money in the box truck industry, right? And that's the thing. A lot of people, they limit themselves. So mm-hmm. that's what we want to do in the box truck solutions program. We want to remove all the limitations, right? There's opportunities with big box stores like Amazon, Home Depot, Wayfair and Loves, right? Uh, if you want to do appliance delivery, that's another avenue, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to go OTR, which is considered over the road, yeah. right? That's just basically learning to dispatch, learning to work the load boards, finding available freight, and just carrying it for the broker. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of different opportunities. Uh, I even have clients that start moving companies, mm-hmm. right? They get a 26-foot box truck, uh, start to solicit their business in their areas, and start moving people, right? So it's mm-hmm. a lot of opportunity out there. So that's kind of interesting. Would you? So you could consider someone who got a truck that's just moving as a box truck business? Because I, I, that makes sense. Like, I see people, uh-huh. the moving companies, they pull up to your house, have you move. But I wouldn't consider them off top like a box truck company. Right. But they're using a box truck. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the real thing, Tony, is really uh, setting up the business the proper way, mm-hmm. right? You want to be able to have a solid business foundation. Right, you want to be uh, in compliant with the FMSCA. You want to make what sure- is that? So the FMSCA they regulate. So uh, it's through the Department of Transportation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you say get your authority, right, what that includes is your MC number. That's your motor carrier number. And then you also have to have a DOT number, which is your Department of Transportation number. This gives you authority to carry freight legally, mm-hmm. right, and make money because uh, the business is regulated through the FMSCA. Got you. Yep. So. You, you don't have to have a CDL, but you do have to make sure you have your authority in order to carry, right? That's correct. What's that process look like to get your authority? And tell me about the, you, you said the, the acronym CMDLT, all that, like break that down for us. Okay, good, man. So here's the very first step. I'm going to start from A to Z for you, mm-hmm. right? The first thing you want to do is get an LLC. Okay. Right. You want to make sure that you have your LLC set up. Mm-hmm. Once that is complete, then you go ahead and file for your authority with the FMSCA. You just can go to the website, fmsca.gov. You're going to apply for an MC number, which is your motor carrier number. Yeah. And you're also going to apply for your DOT number, which is your Department of Transportation number. 
uh, FMSEA takes about 20 business days to complete the filing. Okay. okay. So once that filing is complete, then you can go ahead and move to the next step, right? So while that filing is being processed, what we're doing is we're helping our students find a truck, mm-hmm. right? So while the 20 days is taking place, we're looking for trucks. We're making sure that you have your financing in place. Then once you get that truck and the filing is complete, you go ahead and activate your commercial insurance. You do need commercial insurance to activate your MCN DOT number, even if you're renting the truck. You cannot uh, use the rental company's insurance to, mm. for your business, right? So you right. still have to get the commercial insurance. After you get that commercial insurance, man, you're ready to roll. You get your equipment. You're going to need about four to six straps. Uh, I recommend getting a low bar. Right, mm-hmm. I use low low bars myself. What are low bars exactly? Uh, so it's just a a, a metal plate, so to speak. Yeah. That just uh, it's just a peace of mind for me, right? Even right. though I use the straps to strap down my load, mm-hmm. I like to put the low bar at the end of the load just to make sure it don't slide or anything gotcha. like that. Gotcha. I see, like in the truck to like, yeah. got you because okay. it, it can damage your door, right? Uh, okay. And if it slide against the door, then sometimes the rail will be off, and it's tough to get the door up and down. Mm. So if you put that low bar there. Yeah, that just prevents the freight from sliding back. Got yeah. you. So for people who don't do it the right way, don't get the LLC and all this, they just get a truck and start to move. Is it harder for them to get jobs? Like, do the companies look to make sure the people that they're giving the work to are authorized? Absolutely. That's the very first question that a broker asks. Us, right. Okay. So once you once you contact a broker and you bid on a load, right. So let's just say you're a broker and you post a load that's picking up in Atlanta, Georgia, going to Dallas, Texas, right. And I contact you and I say, hey, Tony. Um, I'm interested in moving that freight for you. Mm-hmm. The first question the broker asks is, may I have your MC and DOT number? Yep. Then they're going to look your company up, mm-hmm. right, to make sure that you're legit, to make sure, to see how long you've been in business. Got you. Right, to make sure you don't have any violations, to make sure that you're dependable. Yeah. And then that's when they'll release that freight to you. So that's probably the difference in that question that I asked about the people who are just moving most likely like furniture and stuff, they probably don't have the authority and stuff because they're more so looking at the truck mainly as just, you know, transportation versus this is more like, even though it's a vehicle, it's the actual business, you know what I'm saying? When they're actually moving freight for other companies. Absolutely. And then when it also comes to insurance, I know that you even have an insurance background before this, right? Yes, sir. So, what is the insurance like? You're moving people's, you know, property mm-hmm. all across the country, right? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us some examples of like things that have gone wrong and like how that is just handled or covered? Because I'm thinking that people who's watching this, they're like, well, if I got forty thousand dollars worth of somebody's equipment or whatever on here, what if I mess it up? Mm-hmm. How does that work? Well, man, that's that's a good question. Um, so if you damage the freight, mm-hmm. right, you will be penalized. Yeah. But again, that's where coaching comes in, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we teach in the mentorship program. You want to make sure that you are taking photos, right? So as you're getting loaded, you're taking photos of the, of the freight. Um, you want to make sure that it's strapped because that's where the damage comes in, right? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not strapped down properly. And then mm-hmm. it's now it's moving around as you're driving and you're damaging the freight, gotcha. right? So that's when coaching comes in. And that's what we try to teach our clients to say, hey, make, make sure you strap this down. Make sure that you take pictures before and after, right? Uh, make sure that you're getting a BOL sign, which is the bill of lading, mm-hmm. right? So when you when you go to that warehouse manager, after you drop off the freight, you go into him and say, you say, hey, look, can you sign this? No damage. He's going to verify it. And then you go from there. So again, uh, things do happen, right? Yeah. You, the unexpected sometimes. But again, if you if you do this the right way and you got the right coaching, you'll prevent some of those, those instances. Yeah. Is the authority, the the DLT numbers, is that like to the specific truck? Because what I, the reason why I'm asking this, you know, with like car insurance, it's to the car, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what happens when it's like your personal box truck company, something happens with the truck, you can't let the business stop. So you go and rent a truck from Enterprise. Is that acceptable? It is acceptable. Okay. But you have to add it to your insurance. That specific truck for that day or something? Yeah, or however long you're going to have a truck, right? Mm-hmm. So any any truck that you operate under your authority has to be added to your commercial insurance. Got you. Right. Can you break that down in the sense of like, I rented this truck for a weekend because we're moving a load. Mm-hmm. You're just going to, you just simply call your agent. How does that work? Yeah, so you're just going to call your agent. You're going to give them the VIN number, mm-hmm. right? And then he's going to add it to your COI, which is your uh, certificate of insurance. Got you. Right, which you have to have in your truck at all times. Okay. So any 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 truck, I want to repeat this, right? Yeah. 
any truck that you operate under your authority has to be included on your COI, which is your certificate of insurance. Got you. And what does insurance look like in this type of business? Good question. I, I think this is probably one of the yeah. <laughs> biggest questions I get, bro. Um, it varies, right? Yeah. It's hard for me to put a number out there. I get that question a lot when people say, man, how much is it going to cost? Yeah. Insurance is based off of your credit rating, mm-hmm. uh, your zip code, your driving record, right? So if you got more than uh, two or three moving violations in the last two to three years, you can expect to see a hike in your insurance rates. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this, on an average, on a, on the a low end, I'm seeing about eight to $900 a month. Mm-hmm. On a high end, I'm saying- Is that per truck? That's per truck. Okay. Yep, eight, eight to $900 a month on the low end. Uh, on a high end, you can expect to pay about fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you got six different trucks, that's a huge expense for your business, right? It is. Okay, it so is. now that people hear that, let's kind of just talk about mm-hmm. the money that can be made with box trucking because I want them to see like how that's just an operating expense that you know is just part of the game. Mm-hmm. So let's just say we're gonna we're gonna backtrack, right? So we'll we'll say let's fast forward actually a year into the game, mm-hmm. right? I'm trying to get jobs for this trucking. What does the the what's the take home look like from these types of jobs mm-hmm. with a box truck? You know what I'm saying? Um, so here's what we teach in the program, right? Mm-hmm. We the goal is for you to make six figures a year, right? That's not out the gate, right? There, mm-hmm. there is a learning curve. You gotta you gotta learn a business like with any business. Yeah. But once you get through that learning curve, we we say that learning curve should run you about six months. Okay. After those six months, from that point on, you should be making six figures a year. Your take home, my very first year uh, was 2021, and my take home was $80,000. Okay. Right? That's that's after all my expenses. Okay. That's after fuel. That's after the cost of my um, truck note, uh, Mm. insurance, all of those things. Right? Uh, Hotel stays. I was over the road for a year, um, and my, my net was $80,000 after that. That's good, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? $80,000, first, first year in the business. Yeah, can't complain about that. And that's like you being your own boss. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the politics like between box truck business and an 18-wheeler driver? Like, how how is that politics? So how they look at each other, how they feel, like, all that. Nah, man, I think it's it's uh, it's a good relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody is has the same goal. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to get to the back, right? Yeah. So the thing is, I, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna shift that comp, that question a little bit. Right? Okay. With I'm gonna talk about the load board, right? When you go on a load board, what we teach is how to book partials, right? How to book partials load, partial and break load. Break down what a partial is. So a partial load is, you know, maybe one pallet. They're not paying as much, you know, to deliver it. They may say, uh, "Hey, we got a pallet for you." I'll give you an example. Uh, so I use Nolan Transportation Group. That's a free load board for anybody out there looking for free load boards. Nolan Transportation Group, right? I booked the load with Nolan. It was paying me six hundred dollars. It picked up in uh, Chicago, Illinois, and it was going to Lansing, Michigan. Now it was one pallet, right? So that's considered a partial load. You got to think about it. I'm in a 26 foot box truck, right? Mm-hmm. A 26 foot box truck holds 12 standard pallets, okay. right? So I, I got a truck. I still got 11 pallets I can get on here. 12, like just flat, right? Yup, standard pallets. Okay, right. Uh, that can be, you know, loaded with mm-hmm. all type of things. It just yeah. depends, right? Um, so I found this partial load on Nolan Transportation Group, paying me six hundred dollars. So what I did was I found another load that was going that way, right? Mm -hmm. Another partial. That load was paying me $800. So that's what we teach in the program. We call it the 5L dispatching strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Learn the load board. Get load board subscriptions, right? Learn and negotiate, right? Uh, And then get to the loop, right? Mm, That's the last L, right? (laughs) And that's what we teach in the program, man. So, again, partial loads is is really the key to being successful over the road. But a lot of those partials are designed for 18-wheelers, right? Because you got to think, they got uh, a whole truck load. And if you're going this way and you say, hey, it's $400, they're thinking, you know, 18-wheelers like, oh, okay, I'm making... $1,500 
X amount of dollars anyway, and I'm going that way, I'll grab it and make an extra 400 bucks. Right. But as a box truck owner, I'm like, hey, I'll take it. Right. And then I'll find another load that's going that way so I can make this load make sense. Mm, got you. Okay. Yeah. What, between, break down load boards, right? Because okay. I'm, I'm on the outside, and I always hear load board. And yeah. I, I don't know if that was just one central universal system that everybody uses. Yeah. But it seems like there's different ones because you just gave us game on a free load board that they could use. So break down just load board. Okay, cool. So a load board is basically a website that mm-hmm. you can go to to find work for your business. Mm-hmm. There's several load boards out there, <clears throat> right? You have a lot of free load boards, and then you have some subscription-based load boards as well, like DAT. DAT is like one of the more popular load boards that people use. Um, so that's that's load boards in a nutshell, right? Mm-hmm. You're just going to find a good load board that you're comfortable with, yeah. right? You got to figure out which one works best. What's the difference in them? Um... Like, is it, is it just basically, like, which platform you like better? Like, how you could like Uber better or Lyft better? There you know you what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just the platform, really, that you like. Because here's the thing. As a broker, if I got freight that I'm trying to move, I may post it on four or five different load boards, right? Mm. Uh, TQL is another good uh, free load board for new authorities, right? So that's some game for uh, those. How do they filter out just to be for new authorities? Um. Well... That's a good question, bro. How do they filter out? Um, I, I just know from being in the industry, to be honest. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Just I just know TQL works with yeah. a lot of new authorities and give new new uh, businesses opportunities. Got you. Got you. Yeah. And my question when it comes to like the low board, because one of my homies, he's in uh, he's a dispatcher. Right. OK. What I'm always wondering is. How when you're new, mm-hmm. how do you fight for your piece of the pie? Because it seems like everybody can see the jobs. How do you get in? Because the people who know it better seem like they would just be taking all the jobs, you know? Man, bro. How much time we got? Because I'm about to. I'm yeah, about we got to. Gotta, we, gotta, we, we just getting started. <laughs> I'm about to give you some game on okay, this. Okay, okay. <laughs> Take a sip, too. <laughs> all right, listen, bro. How do you differentiate yourself, right? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of competition out there. This, this game is for those that's going to go get it. You got to treat this like here's the thing, bro. People will get up and work 12 hours for somebody else and then start a business and think it's going to get easier, mm-hmm. right? That's not the case, man. You got to work, fam. And what's going to separate you is your work ethic, right? If You should be up 6, 7 a.m., contacting brokers. Any broker you speak to, you should be jotting down his information. You should be professional. That's going to separate you, right? It's not personal. These brokers, they busy. Sometimes they can be rude, right? Mm-hmm. But don't let that shift you because you got a goal in mind, right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to build a business here. You invested, you know, all this money to get this business started. Don't lay down now, right? right? So that's what's going to separate you, the work ethic, man. Get up early, contact brokers, be professional, send emails. Literally, bro, when I first started, <clears throat> bro, I was getting up 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, Whoever I talked to yesterday, even if they didn't give me the load, I'm yeah. emailing them in the morning. Got you. Right. Good morning. Hey, this is Von Zell with SRM Group. That's the name of my trucking company. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Von Zell with SRM Group. Uh, I spoke to you yesterday. You guys didn't have anything. Do you have anything today? Right. I mm-hmm. use constant contact. Yeah. That way I can send multiple emails at once. So if I speak to five brokers a day for a month, that's 150 emails. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now I'm sending this one email every morning to 150 brokers and I'm on a low board calling. Right. OK, so I got a question. So I'm looking at it like there's the load board. Right. And right. this is coming from being green, not understanding it. Yeah, perfect. So I see biz launch needs to move, you know, 10 screen printer machines. Right. OK. Are they not getting like 200 emails from everybody just trying to contact them? No. They're not? Nah, bro. Okay, why aren't they, though? Because I thought it would just be literally, like... I remember one time I went on a site because I did need to, like, move a piece of equipment when I was in T-shirt business. Mm-hmm. And it was just, like, all these quotes just, like, hitting my email, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess in my head, I'm thinking that's what they're receiving. And if you're just an email, how do you stand out? I'm calling. Okay. I'm, I'm emailing and I'm calling. Okay. And I'm doing it every day. Yeah. Right. So they just get used to seeing you. Yeah. 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 I'm 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 putting something in the subject line to catch the attention. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm also making myself 
uh, noticeable on the f- initial phone call. Yeah. Right. So if I'm calling you now, I'm dispatching myself, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm calling the broker and I'm saying, "Hey, good morning, Tony, man. This Vonzel, brother. I spoke to you yesterday, fam. You didn't have anything for me, but do you have anything today? Yeah. If I do that every day." It's going to be that one day when they need something yeah. and they just are like, yeah, this got to go ASAP. And they're right? going to remember you. Yeah, yeah. Right? What do they look for, though? So, like, let's say there's two people that's working with your work ethic because it's not just going to be you, Correct, right? correct. So, you know, in my world, in the marketing agency, they it's more you're going to look at the work. Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, oh, I like his graphics. I like the way his funnels look, whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you get that job? So, one, they're going to look at your MC number. Mm-hmm. Right, they're gonna see if you got any uh, violations. Violations, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have a DOT physical, which indicates that your truck is safe? Yep. Right. Um, it sounds like it's relationship building, right? It's absolutely relationship building. So, how how well, long you been in business? Yep. You know, all of those things play a factor. But yeah. again, if you're new to the industry, right? I'm speaking mm-hmm. for those that's new in the industry. You got to work, bro. Like, And uh-huh. that's where the work comes in, right? The work acted of sending the emails, calling every day, uh, making yourself stand out, have a professional email address, uh, make sure that you stay in compliance with the FMS. Are they looking at your website, anything like that? Like, I'm just trying to think like that. That's two a good, good question, bro. Um, they may. Yeah. They may look at your website. I had a website, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, I recommend that my students get websites. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you're you're spending a bunch of cash to get the business started, that may not be in the cards right now. Right, right, you right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you just got to kind of work. Are there ever lows that are just on there for like weeks and no one's just really hitting them up? Yeah, if the rate's not making sense. Got you, got yeah, you. Yeah. And then, so let's let's go into rates, right? Okay. Because when I was talking to my dispatch friend, and then we'll start talking about dispatching and everything like that, mm-hmm. I was like, do the big players not just always undercut everybody and they get all the jobs? Because they, cause they, the big players like, we can take this job for less because mm-hmm. it's something versus the small guy needs it. Like, how do you compete against that, or is it they're not? It's not a monopoly like that. That's that's, that's a good question, bro. Because that's probably one of the biggest mm-hmm. limiting beliefs that I hear. Right? Yeah. People like, man, the race is crap. It's oversaturated. Things of that nature. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's some. It's not even necessarily big players. It's people that's just new to the industry and don't understand. It's yeah. taking lower rates that can throw things off. Right. right. But again, that goes back to relationship building, bro. Mm-hmm. Like once you build those relationships and they know your work ethic and they feel confident that Tony's going to pick this up and drop it off, um, you know, not damaged and on time, mm-hmm. you know, you just start to, you know, build relationships and receive phone calls. So again, man, I, I go back to work ethic. Yeah. Fam. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just one that believes that it can, anything can be overcame. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And once you like lock in a customer, is it, is it like once you lock him in, usually is that like repeat business coming through? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. man. I want to shout out my man, uh, Atiba, man of Jaws Freight yeah. right now, right? Um, he is definitely an example of that. Like my man has built so many relationships just over the years. We we both started around the same time. Uh, we just kind of went in different directions with it. Uh, but but he is he proof, man. I use him, for example, all the time because he built so many relationships where now he can he can kind of wait for his phone to ring. Got you. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. Um. About how many customers do you need in order to kind of be successful in this business? Let's just say if you only got one truck, mm-hmm. let, let's, let's just make it easy, right? Okay. For people starting out. You are in a transition right now in your career. Mm-hmm. You see Von Sell online and you're like, I'm going to start a box truck business. Mm-hmm. You know, I leverage my credit. I got the money, whatever it is. I get the truck, get my authority, all of that. I don't want to do too much. I just want to take care of my family. About how many like customers do I need in order to just do that eighty thousand like you did? Like I just want to take care of home, not overwork. What does that look like? So, this is what we call. This is what we talk about: consistent, reliable income. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something that I preach to my students. Right. You want to make consistent, reliable income. I'm here's what I teach in my program. To, to have a consistent, reliable business where you're making about eighty to $100,000 a year, you need to make about three to $4,000 a month, right? Not a, I mean, a week, I'm sorry. 
it's it's a lot of different ways you can do this. You say how many customers, but it, it really it don't work that way, right? Mm-hmm. Not not the way I'm green. I'm asking. No, no it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So you, you if a dedicated lane is one example, right? You mm-hmm. may get a dedicated lane, which means that you're working for one vendor running the same load, you know, every day, right? Yep. That's one way you can make that eighty to hundred K. Another way is go OTR. Right, meaning over the road, work the load board every day. You can definitely make eighty to hundred k that way, right? Um, appliance delivery, right? If you want to be an appliance deliverer, that's only one customer, right? That can be a Lowe's, that could be a Home Depot. Uh, you need to make six to seven hundred dollars a day. Uh, I get a lot of limiting beliefs, right? People are like, oh, you can't make the money. You absolutely can make the money, right? Yeah. If you're going to drive, you like if you if you want to start a appliance delivery business uh, with Lowe's, you can go through Marisk, Marisk.com, because I know a lot of people. I get that question a lot, bro. How do you get the contract? Marisk.com is one vendor that you can go through. Uh, JB Hunt also offers contracts for Home Depot, right? The average pay is between. Um, I know with Marisk, my contract is for seven hundred and twenty-five dollars a day. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm not driving, right? I'm just creating passive income. So my take home is less. But if I was a driver, right, that's one less person that you have to pay. Now you're going to make more. So that's another way you can make six figures a year, right? And then Amazon is really um, a really a good way to create a business and a stream you of revenue. You can get started with Amazon real quick. Six months. You got to have, um, your authority has to be active for six months before you can get access to Amazon Relay's slow board. And then if you like, let's just say you've been driving for two years and you want to jump to the Amazon, they're always shipping. So I know it's easy, right? (laughs) Listen, bro, Jeff Bezos is not running out of work, bro. Yeah. Like, like (laughs) you you cannot have too many trucks for Amazon. Right, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. What can you break down to me? What dedicated lane means? You've always told me that, Mm -hmm. but it sounds like I'm just like, how do you get a dedicated lane? Like in my head, the way I picture it, and it's Mm -hmm. probably not this. Mm -hmm. Is when I pass these big warehouses Mm -hmm. and they got like 16 bays, it's like, oh, there's his bay. Mm -hmm. Like, what does dedicated lane mean? Okay, dedicated lane is, um, let's use, I know you did clothing before, right? Right. Let's say you're shipping out um, X amount of T-shirts a day. Like, let's say you you need a truck to deliver your Mm T-shirts daily and you need somebody to do it for you. You're going to hire... You may need to hire a box truck. I got four pallets that I need to ship out every day. Yeah. Right? I'll pay you two fifty a day to come get it. Right. That's a dedicated lane. Got you. Right. So, and that's kind of that consistent, reliable income, right? Absolutely. But where where's the bottleneck? Does it ever kind of get in the way? Because it's like, this, and let me say this. When I was doing T-shirts, right, mm-hmm. I did have those customers who we had that, like, locked-in pricing for. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's that give and take because it's like, if I mess up with this person once, I probably lose that consistent. Yeah. But sometimes it gets in the way of that those big orders that randomly come in. Absolutely. Is that kind of the same thing with the uh, dedicated lane? It is. It is. Okay. And again, that's why I say consistent, reliable income. I always say, listen, I'm going to show you how to get on base consistently. You, you're you never going to hit a home run if you don't get on base. Right. 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 So my goal is to show you how to get on base consistently. Yeah. And then eventually you'll hit some home runs. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Um. Just talking about different types of alternatives in the box trucking business. I heard you say like delivering for appliances mm-hmm. with like Lowe's, Home Depot, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is that a good option for the person who's like, I want to do box truck, but like I need to still be near home. Like I don't need to be like on the road and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Appliance delivery is, is definitely for someone that wants to be home because you're home every day. I think on a, we averaging about 200 miles a day. Right. Mm-hmm. And it is long days. Yeah. All right, I do want to be 100 about that. Um, it is long days, but if that's your way of being home, and I'm gonna be real with you, fam, that's really for um, the younger, the younger man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's a young man game, bro. Because they moving the appliances yeah. on and off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the the other loads, um, and we'll come back to that. With the other loads, when you say a young man's game, right? Mm-hmm. Are you just kind of like pulling up to the dock and they're they're taking their own? 
freight off of the the box truck or are you still unloading it when you have all those pallets like how does it work oh yeah so that's considered no touch freight right mm -hmm. uh so typically when you work in a load board you're not um unloading it most of the time i'll say probably 80 to 85 percent of the time they're gonna unload you uh that's otr right working yeah. a load board but when you're doing um furniture or appliance delivery then you're delivering your Installing oh, your Oh, I see why you said that's the young man's game. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, working, you yeah. double working at that point. No, you yeah. working, bro. Got and, you. And listen, <laughs> I'm still out there working when I have to, bro. Yeah, and, and man, I never asked. How did you even get into all this with box trucks? Man, good question, bro. So, um, again, like you said, I, um, insurance. Mm -hmm. I've been in the insurance industry. What type of insurance were you in? Life, life and health, and okay. uh, insurance adjuster as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Me and my wife both uh, independent yeah. insurance professionals, right? Because yeah. we do a little bit of everything. I've done um, benefit enrollment. I've done life and health. I've worked for Allstate for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been an independent adjuster, so yeah, uh, we consider ourselves licensed got gotcha. you uh, insurance professionals that's right? what's up and yeah did, and did somebody just like put you on game to the box truck or like did you just one day just was like I'm about to rent a truck and. Move move some weight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, when my kids was younger, man, I got my CDL uh, and I drove for Snyder for a little while. Okay. Right? That was OTR. My kids was young, so I wanted to get back home. That didn't quite work out for me. Yeah. Uh, I got into the insurance industry. Uh, then COVID hit. Got right? you. And, and I, I knew I always wanted to get back into it. Uh, but when COVID hit, it kind of freed me up. Mm -hmm. Gave me the opportunity to figure some things out. Was that business still moving during the pandemic? Uh the box truck business. Oh, it was booming during booming. the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the best time. Well, for me, anyway. Yeah. That was the best time to get in it, man. So uh, I bought my first truck, um, drove over the road for about eight months. Okay. Excuse me, started to figure some things out. Yeah. Uh, then I jumped into Amazon. Yeah. And then from there, man, that's that's when it just well, kind of What took does off over me. the road look like for the box truck? Because, like, why would they give it to the box truck versus the 18-wheeler? Well, again, um, they're partial loads, right? They don't they don't care who take it. Yeah, you know, as what long I mean? as it get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as yeah, long yeah. as it get there, right? What's the competition like when you're competing against the eighteen wheeler company? So again, man, it goes back to to work actor, fam. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm because I, I guess they don't care how it gets there as long as it gets there. But and I guess the the semi, there's probably like y'all competing differently, but there's some overlap. Right, so it's like, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. But again, fam, it's, it goes back to the company rec, the company history, mm -hmm. the relationship building, right? All of these things, man. I, mm -hmm. I, I you're competing with whoever can carry it. it. A cargo van sometimes can take a pallet or two. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So there's a lot of competition out there, but again, you got to set yourself apart through your work ethic. Got you. What What's different from like box truck business and courier business? Man, bro. Because I thought about that when you said a cargo van. I'm going to be honest with you, fam. I don't know much about the carrier business. I, yeah. I get a lot of questions about, hey, can you teach me cargo? And I'm sure it's the same principle and the same things apply. Mm -hmm. I just uh, don't really speak on it because I've never done it. Got you. Yeah. Uh, another question I had, too, is dispatching, right? Yeah. So, you know, you talk about it. You said earlier you dispatch yourself. Mm -hmm. What exactly is dispatching? Good question, man. So... Dispatching is the lifeline of your business, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you're going to generate revenue for your box truck. So you have to learn how to dispatch. Uh, well, let me say this. Because I know some people use dispatchers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say that. Um, I wouldn't say learn how to dispatch, but again, I teach my students, man, even if you're not going to dispatch, understand the concept because nobody's going to run your business the way you're going to run your business. Right. Right. And multiple eyes on the low board for your business is always good. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. So, so again, even if you don't have a desire to dispatch loads yourself, uh, you definitely want to at least understand it, understand uh, negotiation, understand what's a good rate and what's not, you know, per mile and things of that nature to make mm -hmm. sure that you are not just running to pay bills. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's dispatching in a nutshell, man. Understanding how to it's read. It's basically the sales. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, yeah, yeah. I guess you can, can frame like, it that is way. Is the dispatcher the one that's sending all those emails out, doing those follow-up calls? That's Absolutely. the dispatcher. Yes. Got you. So yep. yeah, the sales then, I guess. Yeah. And the reason why I ask that, do you greatly 
like chop down your profit margin when you don't dispatch yourself and you're depending on another dispatcher to get you work? Uh, man, good question. Bro. That's <laughs> that's a that's a business mind right there, yeah. right? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely, man. Because the dispatcher charges anywhere from ten to fifteen cents uh, of the load, right? Mm-hmm. So do the math. If you if you make a thousand dollars, you got to pay this dispatcher. We'll say ten percent just to keep the numbers. Um, even um, that's a hundred dollars that you got to get as broker. And again, I just said that you want to make three to four thousand dollars a week, right? So if you're making four grand a week, that's four hundred dollars. That's sixteen hundred a month. That's mm. almost what seventeen four a year. Yeah, right. And you're a new business owner, and you paying out seventeen thousand dollars that you could probably pocket yourself if you could just figure out the skill. Got you. Yeah. And is there like a standard dispatching rate, or is it like you could get God if you don't know? Absolutely. (laughs) Listen, let me tell you when I say this, I used to hear some of my uh, friends that drove trucks or just like a truck driver, because when they used to drop T-shirts off, you know, you just randomly started talking. Yeah. And they was like, man, it's cool. But there's sometimes when I would get to the warehouse and I would see that the dispatcher made just as much money as me (laughs) and I'm driving all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So no, you you can definitely get. um, Got on a higher percentage. I'll mm-hmm. say, put it that way, right? Because some people, I've seen dispatchers charging 16%. Mm. Right? And it's normally like 10, right? Yeah, for box trucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, on the average, it's about 10 to 12%. I wouldn't pay more than 12%, me personally. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some do people. Do you feel do like when you do. first get started, dispatching gets in the way of you driving and delivering? Or are you dispatching while you're driving almost? Man, it can be tough. It can be tough to juggle both. Yeah. Uh, I'll be real with you. Um, it took me a while to figure it out. My wife was helping me out as well, but mm-hmm. um, in the beginning, I was kind of had my laptop in the truck with me, yeah. you know, things like that. And it can, it can get tough, but again, anything you do with repetition, you'll start to figure it out. I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. And what's just that process like of learning it? Right. And well, let's just say this, like, who's the person? Because I used to see people and they have their they got their their trucking course and then they got like their dispatching. Would you say dispatching is the great for the the stay at home person? Because I could see also, too, like, is this a good thing for women to do that? Who are like, you know, maybe they're why their kids are at school. They're dispatching throughout the day. I'm just thinking of opportunities for like who would jump into it. Man, bro, you you. For you not to be in this industry, right? You you hitting on some things, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but honestly, bro, that's that's the perfect opportunity uh, for f- a lot of females are getting into this industry. Um, gives you an opportunity to get into the transportation industry without actually owning a truck, mm-hmm. right? Um, I see a lot of couples do well, right? Mm-hmm. The husband is driving and the wife is dispatching. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity for anybody that wants to get into the transportation industry and you don't want to drive a truck. Yeah. You know, men, a lot, a lot of men out here starting dispatching businesses. That's so it's for anybody that want to yeah. get into this industry and make some money, man. And then this is my question for the beginners, right? Because yeah. you see it all. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. Give me like three common pitfalls that people make when they first get into the game. For box truck owners? Box truck. Um, Man, bro. I don't want to harp on this so much, but <laughs> you you already know I'm finna go for it. Uh-huh. One pitfall I see is that they don't put the work in, bro. Yeah. That's that's I keep stressing this because I see it happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh one, they don't put the work in. One, they don't do the research, right? Mm-hmm. To really understand um the expenses that come with it. Right. Sometimes they so excited to get in it. That they don't do the proper research, I see that happen, and uh, buying the wrong truck, bro. Yeah, I see that a lot, man. Break that down, buying the wrong truck, because I because I think most people would initially think like, let me get on Facebook Marketplace and let me just find a truck that looks like a box. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's not too old, doesn't have enough miles, they're like, let's grab this and let's get to it. Again, you you just hit on something. One, they can they buy an older truck because it's cheaper, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I see that. I mean, here's the thing, fam. We get so many people that come to us like, hey, bro, I bought the truck. I don't have a 26-footer. What can I do with this, right? Right. And that's because they didn't buy the right truck for what they was trying to accomplish, man. Uh-huh. So, again, I recommend this is me. This is what we teach in the program. I'm not saying a 20-footer won't work. I'm not saying a 16-footer won't work. Uh-huh. But, but what I know, 
what I what I've experienced. Yeah. To maximize your earning potential, get that twenty six foot box truck because you can carry more loads, right? You can carry more loads. You can um, you can do Amazon if you don't have a twenty six footer. You can't do Amazon relay, right? Mm. Because if they give you twelve pallets and you got a twenty four footer, yeah, it won't fit. Right. Right? Yeah. So um, that's another one of the pitfalls. Just not getting the right truck, man. Got you. Got yeah. you. What what startup costs look like for somebody trying to get in the game? Good question, bro. I get this question a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? I get this question a lot. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a, a flat rate. I don't usually give out a number, man, because... You don't want to scare nobody. It, not necessarily nah. that, yeah. because there's so many variables. Right, okay. You know what I mean? Um, what it may cost for one person, it could be totally different for the next, mm-hmm. right? But I'm going to give you a number, man, because um, I know people want to know, right? 10000 okay? If you got ten k, you should be able to get up and running, right? Your biggest expense is going to be your down payment for your truck, right? Mm-hmm. That can vary anywhere from 10% to 40 or 50% depending on your credit, yeah, right? You got used truck, new truck? Used, bro. Yeah. Let's go used. That that eighty hundred thousand dollars truck going to make the same money that that used truck going to make. And how much about a used truck cost? Uh, right now, um, I'm seeing an average between like thirty five and 40000 Okay. Right? Cool, cool. That's right? not bad. And then you don't want to get a truck, uh, I say... We're in 2024, so you don't want to get anything older than 2018 mm-hmm. and no more than 250,000 miles. Is getting the truck with your credit just like going to get a car? It is, but you have to do it in your business, right? And most of, most of my students and most people get into this industry, you're a new business owner, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to be a personal guarantee uh, until you can build that business credit. Got you. Got yeah. you. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And then shoot. I want people who are watching this and they're excited right now and they're like, this is what I've been thinking about. Yeah. How do they tap in with you and like, what do you have to offer them so that they don't make costly mistakes? Because I'm a big believer in the cost of opportunity. <laughs> and when we're waiting on things and trying to do stuff and doing stuff wrong, how much we actually lose. So if they wanted to move faster, tell them about like what you have to offer. Man, so we have a few different ways that we can work with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, We offer a 16-week mentorship program. Mm -hmm. All right? 16 weeks. That's a long time. It is, bro. (laughs) So so that's the thing. And the reason why we did it that way, Tony, is because um, after you get your truck, we don't want to just, okay, you got your truck and now you're on your own. Right? Mm -hmm. So we want to kind of walk you through the process after you get your business set up. Okay? Um, So that's one way you can work with us. We have a 16-week mentorship program. Uh, we will walk you through every step of the fa- every facet of the business, right? That's from getting an LLC to filing for your MC and DOT number uh, to finding a truck to uh, getting connected with a commercial lender, right? Regardless of your credit history, uh, we can connect you with somebody that will get you approved. Um, getting commercial insurance, right? We will shop for the best rates for you. Uh, we don't just go to one company. We use a broker, right? So we can get you the best rates there. Um we can also assist you with the down payment uh, for insurance. We have a program we work with, uh, Single Point, uh, that they just started this initiative right with Box Truck Solutions. They typically work with eighteen wheelers, uh, but we got we worked out a deal where they're working with some of our students and they're giving them a um, insurance down payment assistance. Um, so that's one way, right? Yeah. So we literally walk you through every step through our mentorship program. Um, How I'll, do they find that? Um, you could just go to my website, myboxtrucksolutions.com, okay. my, myboxtrucksolutions.com. That's one way we help you. Uh, I do free webinars, right, where I'm literally telling you how to get started on my webinar, mm-hmm. right? So if you're really, like, interested and you're like, hey, I may not need the mentorship, um, but if you can kind of give me the steps, I can figure it out on my own. Okay. Uh, you could just go to my Instagram page, which is, again, myboxtrucksolutions. Uh, click on the link in my bio. And then you can go ahead and register for the webinar. I host them every Monday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay. And before we get out of here, look into the camera and let them know what is your best piece of advice for the person that's interested in moving into this industry? Which camera? This one right here? Yep. All right, fam. So here's what my best piece of advice for you um, getting into the box truck industry. If you're looking to create a six figure box truck business, the first thing that I do, I recommend that you get is a mentor, right? Get a mentor, get somebody to walk you through this ever changing industry, right? As they say, the more you learn, the more you earn, 
right? So that's probably the first step that I say. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, do your research, right? Do your research and then understand and set some realistic expectations so you can understand how long it's going to take you to get this business off the ground. All right. So those those are my tips. And then thirdly, I want to say, man, have a strong work ethic, man. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, if you are willing to work 40 and 60 hours for your for somebody else, be willing to invest 60 to 80 hours into yourself, build that business, create a legacy for your family and, and create some freedom. All right. For yourself. And y'all heard it, y'all. That's my guy, Von Sell Simmons from Box Truck Solutions. Make sure you tap in. We're going to put all the links in the description below so that you can tap in for his free training. Learn about this. Follow him on Instagram. And once again, you've been tuned in with Tony, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.